We are live. Live. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a really special surprise live. I'm super excited to have four, all four of us on here. Um, we are going to be talking about how to shift from scarcity in love, sex, and business and move it into unlimited abundance. Um, so I first want to introduce uh, one of my colleagues who's going to be working with us on this. Um, and just before I pass it over, a reminder that those of you in San Diego, we have a live event in person. Um, that's in the link is in the description. We'll post it in the comments. You guys can join us live, all four of us, to really up level your life in love, sex, and business. So uh, without further ado, I'd love to pass it on to a master um, relationship and love expert. Um, he's brilliant. He's been at this for decades and um, someone to learn from that I'm still learning from. Super inspirational. Very excited to have him with us on our team for this event and for this live tonight. Scott Katamas, welcome. Thank you. Wow. Well, first of all, it's great to be here with everybody. And hello, Facebook friends watching us. And I want to acknowledge those of you, most of you who are watching right now are probably not actually watching live. You're watching the video replay because it takes a while for people to find us. And uh, Karina and I have noticed that most of the people that end up watching our lives actually watch the replays. So thank you very much for watching, whether you're live or watching the replay. And do put any questions, comments in, and we'll go back and review and, and respond to as best as we can. So more love in life. Um, I think what I want to share is that I believe with all my heart that the meaning of life, literally the human existence, we are here to learn to love ourselves. That's why we're here. And we're here to learn to love each other. Um, I've worked with a lot of amazing master teachers, spiritual teachers, and a lot of the ones that have really studied death, dying, and especially near-death experiences and afterlife experiences, there's a very consistent consensus that whether you're talking to somebody who's passed on and they're you know, coming through the veil and connecting with us, it's always the same message. The treasure that we bring to the next world, or if you prefer the astral plane or heaven, is the love that we've given and the love that we've received. I just really want us to think about that. The treasure, the meaning of life is the love we've given and the love we've received. And sometimes, you know, you go, my God, this person had such a hard life, cancerous ordeals and all these incredibly painful, hard things. Well, we've all had the experience where we were having a nightmare and it's really hard. And then we wake up and go, oh my God, it was just a dream. Mm -hmm. What if sometimes if you're having a hard life or a hard year, it's growing the love muscles, learning to love yourself despite the disappointments or the wounding, learning to love others even though they don't treat you the way you want to be treated. Learning to love is the meaning of life. And it's a never ending, it's a never ending thing. If you're still in a body and you're still breathing, you still got lessons to learn of how to love yourself and how to love others more fully. And so I guess I just wanted to start with that as a premise and as a reminder that when we interpret hard circumstances as there's something wrong with me or the world doesn't love me or I can't get my needs met, when we create an interpretation and we react to the interpretation, we usually make things much worse. So when are you reacting to your interpretation of something difficult in life, a disappointment, someone not being the way you want them to be, and the, the ninja move, the pivot, what is it you're longing for? See, if we're focusing just on the deficiency, we get more deficiency. We start coming up with these interpretations. Oh, there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with her. Life sucks. But if we go, okay, I'm not getting the love that I'm really longing for. I'm not getting the financial abundance I'm longing for. Don't interpret it to mean there's something wrong with you or the world. Drop into the beauty of your longing. Pivot 
into the beauty of the longing. Whatever we're longing for is always beautiful. That was God's way of saying to listen to us today. <laughs> and when we focus on the longing, we relax. We go from grasping. We go from reactivity into receptivity. And then in that place of receptivity, then we can tune into what are my next steps to attract more abundance? What are my next steps to have more love in my life? So that's kind of my opening thoughts. Oh, and I get to introduce the woman who's bringing the great love I've always wanted into my life. And honestly, this is a, a perfect example of my life. I've had a very blessed life. And I had a wife that I love very much who died seven years ago. Um, I was in a wonderful relationship in many ways, but there were other ways that it just wasn't meeting my needs. And I prayed. I tuned in. And I didn't feel bad about myself. And I didn't make my ex wrong. And I accepted my wife's passage. And I prayed. I prayed for exactly what I wanted to experience in love. And you all get to see her. There she is. <laughs> um, and it's the most amazing it's the most amazing experience romantically of my life, and I'm so grateful for it. And she's very, very smart. She's not just beautiful, but she's very, very smart, very wise. And so with that, I turn it over to Darwin Karina. Well, it's great to be here with you, Scott and Genevieve and Casey. And um, what a juicy, fun topic for us to kind of dive in and explore. I just realized I didn't even plan it, but I'm wearing my love shirt. It says love, so I was ready to bring in the love. And um, I love this topic about really bringing in more love, more intimacy, more joy, more joy, and how that affects our life, our sense of abundance, our business, um, and really just feeling alive and joyful. And um, I love what you said, Scott, because I think you know often um, many people are coming from that deficiency mindset, and I know I was in some ways in my life, even though I had experienced a lot of success um, and a lot of amazing experiences. Um, I think there were some ways where I was feeling deficiency in the love, um, intimacy world, and um, really getting clear about that longing for myself was um, a big part of the growth for you know that I've had this last couple of years and really getting in touch with that energy and building that energy within myself through the oils, through meditation, through dance. Dance has been a big, big piece for me of really tuning into um, the divine feminine energy. And then of course, manifesting an amazing partner relationship has been a big part of that as well. And um, it's been a big, big piece for me of really, Ooh. oh, I'm hearing an <laughs> echo, echo. <laughs> um, so I'm excited for this. And I really, um, I see the correlation in myself and in many of the women that I work with, especially where having that piece of really a juicy love, um, sensual life is such a big part of moving to those next levels professionally as well. And I really think a lot of women, myself included, kind of, you know, especially if you're a mom, especially if you're working, it's like that part of our life can just really take a back seat. And we get to a certain point and we're like, why are we not moving forward? And it's like this missing piece. It's like the secret sauce. So I'm excited that we're going to dive in and talk about it because I think it, it's really, really important. It's been really important in my life and I see it in, in um, a lot of the women that I work with. And speaking of amazing, juicy women who <laughs> I want to introduce, um, Genevieve Rudolph is just an amazing friend and an incredible erotic embodiment coach, as well as essential oil expert, and really works with so many individuals and couples to help them in these areas of intimacy and love and sexuality. And I've learned a lot from her already. I'm really excited about this event that we're gonna be doing, all four of us, in San Diego. And I would love to just turn it over to you, Genevieve, to talk a little bit about, about all this juiciness. So take it away, Genevieve. Yay, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Karita. Um, what a fun intro. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I love everything that Scott that you said and Karina that you said and and you know, it just brought me back to thinking about where because when I first met you, Karina, where my life was mm -hmm. was a place of I was living in scarcity and constriction mm -hmm. and fear. And I was this was I remember trying to 
make everything happen. I was muscling through, you know, in my business, I was muscling through in my relationships. I was very, um, you know, like checking off the goals to try to get to where I wanted to go. And I love Karina that you said the secret sauce, because Mm -hmm. what I didn't realize was like that for me, my sexuality and having a sexual freedom experience in my body that was the turning point for me to have the abundance right of love in my life that I have now the abundance of financial um, freedom that I have now the business acumen and the flow and like the creation and knowing what to do day to day I'm, I'm no longer in this place of fear and resistance and constantly checking of whether or not I'm doing the right thing or saying the right thing because when you have what I learned is when I have my sexual flow moving through my body, mm-hmm. right? When I know, I know how my body's feeling, I start to trust it. I start to lean into my desire and, and really take care of my life force energy, which especially as women, right? Like our sexual energy is life and creation. And so once I started to do that, it was like clockwork, like everything just shifted. And that's why I get so passionate about doing events like this with you guys, because it's, it's like, wow, what, how many people are just waiting for that little shift Mm -hmm. and that little tweak, Mm -hmm. right? And, and they're waiting and they're like, what do, and I don't, if you're anything like I was, I was trying everything, like going to every workshop and going to every event. And because the events weren't embodied, because Mm -hmm. the events weren't inside of my system and where I was actually working with my nervous system and my body and and my pleasure mm-hmm. none of it was sticking like I was getting it mentally and I knew that I was great but I didn't feel that on the inside and it wasn't until I had um you know what what, what we're what we hope to give people the experience of on Sunday right the, the experience of flow and abundance in their body through the oils through sex and through love that then everything just started to line up into place. And, and that's my current, like, I just get so excited because I know there are people like me and I can see it in their eyes when they walk into the room and when they're, you know, see it in the things they type on Facebook, like they're almost there. We're all almost there guys. You're almost there. (laughs) And literally all, all that we don't have to do much, but all we have to do is show up. Right. And it'll just kind of happen for us once we get the flow moving through our body. Um, so I'm really excited to be talking about this and to be teaming up with you guys on really what changed my entire life. Right. Um, and I'm super grateful. And I also wanted to introduce um, one of my dearest friends, business partners. Um, this woman is someone that I look up to greatly. Mm-hmm. She uh, is like genius in everything that she does. She's um, trained in trauma, trained in sex coaching, trained in intimacy work. Um, like all the just name an accolade and Casey's got it. She's like gone and mastered it. Um, <laughs> Cause that's basically how she functions. Um, if you have a question you ask her and she'll know. Um, and not only that, but she embodies all of the work that she's learned. So she knowing her as a human friend that we talk all the time, knowing like she is that person who just shows up in love, who shows up in, in brilliance and genius every day. Um, without even trying, right? Mm. So, um, I wanted to introduce my dear friend, Casey Neal. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Thank you for such an amazing reflection and intro. So gosh, um, I just am honored to follow the three of you guys and be able to, you know, add and sprinkle in some little nuggets here. Um, And, you know, I'm a big believer that how you are in your love and intimate life is how you are in your business and how you are in your business oftentimes is how you are in love and intimacy. And what would the world be like today if every man, woman, and however you choose to identify you were filled with love. You were filled with pleasure. You got all your desires met. You had all of your needs met. What would life look like on this planet as a whole? 
you know, I'm, I'm of the stance of we are, we are in the state that we're in because people aren't having the love and intimate lives that they actually deeply desire. And one of the ways I have found is, you know, what all of you guys have said, it's embodying it. It's learning to listen to our bodies. Our bodies have so many messages. And as much as I love positive psychology, and as much as I'm a totally for solution focused therapy and all of that kind of stuff, we need to listen to what our bodies are telling us, you know, when our bodies are telling, when they're angry, when they're upset, when they're sad, they're that way for a reason. There's a message our bodies are telling us. And it's the same thing in our intimate life. If there's pain, there's a reason it's there. There's something going on. And if we just learn how to take a step back and say, oh, body, what are you trying to tell me? Anger, what do you want me to know? What do you need from me? And we listen to it. Our bodies have, are filled with wisdom. And from there, we will start to bring in the abundance. We will start to bring in everything that we want. It opens up flow. It creates possibilities. One of the things that I've found that's been really helpful for me are using oils. The oils have been ways that I can access what it is that I need to in a really safe and um, held container. And I really love being able to do that because because of doing that, I am able to open my heart more. I'm able to find what pleasure means. Pleasure doesn't have to be sexual. Many people think that pleasure can be anything. Pleasure can be bending down and smelling a rose or petting a dog or a cat or holding a baby. Pleasure can be eating something really delicious or just being in the moment. And in that pleasure, what if we learned how to do that in everything that we did, every breath that we took, every step that we made? what would be possible on the other side of that. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys. And, and Scott, I'm going to turn it over to you or um, whoever wants to take it <laughs> over because I know we all have so much to say. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll share a little something. And I'm really, it's a blessing to be with all three of you and each of you is so wise. Everything so good. The oils and listening to the body. And so I'm going to riff on that a little bit about really listening and so this is all about how to have more love in our life how to have more uh, abundance greater love greater sex and so i want to talk about the attitude of gratitude um how incredibly important that is um by the way i i just have to admit maybe it's my ego but the spotlight is still on an incredibly beautiful woman much more attractive than i am but since I'm talking, I'm wondering if Genevieve is really talking. <laughs> there we go. There I am. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I have a deal. I love it. So let's talk about gratitude because, again, look, there's times that we're in a bad mood. There's times that we are not feeling the love. We're not feeling the abundance. We're not feeling it. And so if we can just really dedicate ourselves to being grateful and always there's things we can be grateful for, always. We can be grateful for nature. Nature is always a great starting point for me. If I'm, if I'm in a funk, put me in the woods, put me at the beach, put me at nature where I start concentrating on something much bigger than my, my little world. And so it's seeing the beauty and the magnificence of the world. Another practice that kind of goes along with that is learning to see the divine in everything. And it's, it's a wonderful practice. Uh, even learning to see the divine in people that bother you. You can start with public figures, right? Learning to see the divine and whatever political figure drives you crazy. Can you, can you find God in that person? Can you find divinity? Can you find that place where we go outside of the judgment. Now, it doesn't mean you have to agree with that person or agree with their choices, but can you find the divinity? And this practice of gratitude, finding the divinity, even in somebody that bothers us, then we start applying it to kind of find the divinity in my difficult circumstances. Can I find the divinity in everything happening around me? And it shifts us out of victim thinking and puts us into 
a higher state of consciousness. It literally raises our vibration. Um, and if these are kind of new agey words, divinity, vibration, it, you know, there's, there's mainstream language we can use for it too. Um, at the bottom line, you feel better, just feeling better. So those are uh, a couple of tips and I get to turn it back over, I believe to uh, my beloved Karina. Thank you, beautiful. And um, yeah, I think just the whole concept of being in our body and our body being um, a way of knowing things, right? And moving through things. I also wanna just um, second what uh, Casey was saying about the oils and how much they've been a conduit for me with, you know, when I first started using them, I was really using them primarily for physical things, um, you know, for just aches and pains and taking care of my family and kind of the medicinal. And then very quickly, I started to use them for more of emotional, emotional healing. And they really open things up, allow us to, I think, feel and to experience. They also kind of bring nature to us similar to what Scott was saying, like wanting to be in the forest. Like when I open certain oils, it's like, I'm in the forest. I'm smelling the forest. I brought the forest into my office with me, you know? And so um, they've been a really beautiful tool for really bringing nature into my environment, as well as being able to work through all the different emotional layers and spiritual as well, emotional and spiritual. And I find there's often a real crossover there um, with, you know, how our emotions can open up into a flow where we are then experiencing more, more of the divine, more of that God in, in others and in ourselves and, um, and really moving through those blocks. I think that's what we were kind of talking about with this webinar specifically was how do we move from scarcity? Like scarcity is, is really, I would say a mindset. Scarcity is a belief system that we're not enough. There isn't enough. Right. And those are mental, emotional constructs. That's not reality. Right. When we look at the world, it's an abundant world. Right. There is sunshine and rain and flowers and beauty. And and so it's like a banquet table. It's like a smorgasbord. Right. So, you know, there is abundance and it's clearly abundant around us and, and we get to choose into that. And, but it does require moving through, I think moving through those places in us that are stuck, if they're emotional, if they're sexual, if they're mental. And so um, all of these practices that we're talking about and I think bringing the oils in has been a huge piece for me of just kind of getting in touch with with those emotions and, and the physicality and even the senses, right? And the senses as a pathway into what am I feeling? What is my body experiencing? What is it needing? Like Casey said, what is that anger? Where is it? Is it in my stomach? Is it in my throat? You know, what, what needs to come out? So um, yeah, I'm excited for this process. And I, I um, wanna turn it over to Genevieve because I know that um, you probably have some really cool stuff to talk about, especially with the, um, the erotic embodiment, like where does that piece come into this flow of moving through the emotions and spirituality and coming to know ourselves more? Mm -hmm. You totally know exactly what I was so excited to talk about. So like, <laughs> Yay. I'm listening to you guys and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, divinity and erotic embodiment. We're here. We're ready. <laughs> my favorite thing to talk about. So, um, so yes, yeah, scarcity, scarcity is a mindset and it's also inside of our systems right like we get so conditioned to scarcity um that you know we run around the world conditioned by a society that's already in that scarcity they're already in that place of there's not enough right everyone's out buying 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 doing 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 fast 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 and our bodies are constricted is the best way that i can describe it right there's a constriction to them it's the complete opposite of open receiving flow sexual energy right mm -hmm. and the level in which we can move sexual energy through our body is in direct correlation to the level in which we can relax right that constriction and deregulate mm -hmm. the system that we have in our bodies that's that, that's all constricted and so um i'm a how girl i don't know i'm i like knowing how i don't i don't like the theoretical I'm like let's go on the body here we go so I want to give you guys the how <laughs> because that's what I need in order for me to believe it <laughs> um so 
thankfully there, there's a framework and a tool that I'm going to be teaching on Sunday and that you guys can all use um, to start deconditioning yourself out of fear-based constrictive thinking, right? Um, and how to also start opening up to pleasure and abundance. It's the same, it's the same idea. And so it's called the erotic blueprint framework. And this was formed by Jaya. And there are five of them. I'm going to go through them uh, real quickly. So focus. Um, <laughs> they are not hierarchical. You, this, I'm just how, how I have them memorized and how I always ramble them off. Okay. So, and why just again, quickly before I dive into them, why they're so important is because they really they're, they tap into particularly on your body, what your body needs in order to downregulate, in order to open up and receive, in order to move to a place of like deep pleasure, right? I know for me, once I tapped into my erotic blueprint, I then moved to that place and divinity dropped in, right? Which I'll talk more about on Sunday, but like, wow, that was my awakening experience was through sexuality. Um, so here they are. Um, the energetic blueprint is the first one. Uh, and energetics, your superpower is like highly sensitive, super empathic, right? Able to pick up on the energy of, of everyone, the whole room. And, and sexually the same, right? So in, in terms of pleasure, it's just like little bits of energy are more than enough for you. <laughs> and the shadow of the energetic is overwhelm mm -hmm. and so maybe in you know in love or love relationships or in sex or in business you find yourself easily getting overwhelmed right mm -hmm. now that's a very clear sign that that could be your blueprint <laughs> right um and then there's sensuals the superpower of the sensual is your ability to set up the most exquisite like relaxation scene that really caters to all five of the senses. So candles lit, music flowing, um, oils in the diffuser, right? Like the whole nine, the clothes are delicious. Everything is really yummy. Um, and, and you're the one that puts on events for your business and everything looks incredible, right? Or you have a date over and like every, it's just like perfect out of a movie. Um, smells amazing, beautiful environment. The shadow of the sensual is often getting stuck in the head because you're surveying a lot, right? Like what's around, we're surveying it. And so we're, we're in our minds thinking about the environment rather than really being in our bodies. And then the, um, there's the kinky blueprint. The kinky blueprint, the nervous system of the kinky blueprint um, is amazing because the superpower is that kinkies have this ability to play with fantasy and to play with like thought process. So in love, right, allowing ourselves to fantasize in business, allowing ourselves to fantasize in sex, same thing. And they've got that wiring pretty, pretty, pretty done, right? Like they're pretty good at it. The shadow of the kinky is, is deep shame, fear. Like, is this okay? Is it okay for me to, to want this, to desire this? right? Um, the sexuals are, your nervous system deregulates the best by getting things to the point, right? Getting to the end goal, end result sexually. Um, and the same in love and business, right? It's very like straightforward sexuals. The shadow of the sexual is missing the, the delicious journey, right? Um, which I think, I don't remember who was talking about it, but someone brought up on, on this call, the concept of like, of just appreciating the divine in everything, right? Um, and it's that that they're missing that piece. And then the shapeshifter, you guys have the superpower of all of them, right? Um, and your shadow could also be of all of them <laughs> to think about, right? Now, how do we start to heal the shadows? Come to the event and I'll show you, it's on the body. Right. It's on the body because we're working to deregulate the nervous system. So those are the five erotic blueprints. If you're watching on Facebook Live, I'd love for you to type in what you think you are just to get a read. I tend to attract a lot of energetics. So I'm curious <laughs> if they'll have that on, the, on my page or not, or if we've shifted. Um, so yeah, and I wonder if Casey, now Casey also knows the erotic blueprints very well, and she knows the oils very well as, as well. So um, I'd love for her to chime in here on anything that she might want to add um, to what I've just said. Awesome. Thank you. So, oh gosh, what do I want to add? I think I want to save the oils for 
on Sunday. And, but what I do want to say is the beauty of the oils is that you can bring them into absolutely everything that's been talked about by every single one of us here, which is really, really cool. The oils, um, they are what they are, which is, oh, they're ju juicy and yummy and amazing and heal so many different, um, like not heal, but maybe heal. I don't know, Corinna, you can <laughs> add a little bit to that. They, they do. I think they're magic, right? Like, I feel like I get to be a, a witch or, you know, playing and <laughs> stuff and the nature and all that, but, you know, it, they provide, they pr provide so many possibilities for healing and expansion in so many different areas. And what I feel really called to talk about is um, kind of that middle space between like the divine and business and and love and sex, which is love. And I want to use that through the five love languages because some people may not understand what the five blueprints are and and they may not have heard of the five love languages, but here's a really it's it's a place in between. And you can bring, so this is something I teach on at corporations, which is how to bring the five love languages into your business which is really beautiful. And then you can also bring them into your life. And so the idea of the five love languages talks about how oftentimes the partner in front of you doesn't understand your way of giving love. And therefore they're not understanding the way that you like to receive love. And they say that there are five different ways in which people give and receive love. And it's gifts, words of affirmation, acts of service, physical touch, and quality time. We can go into those more on Sunday. Um, the reason I bring those up is that oftentimes we don't notice right away that our partner has a different love language that we do than we do. And so um, when we first meet a person, and this is what um, Dr. Gary Chapman talks about in his book, is oftentimes we become one. So we're in a relationship with a person and we love that person and we think that they're one and there are only one. And, and there's kind of this, I want to say a little bit of enmeshment, but without diagnosing it as such, but it's this new relationship energy and it's so amazing. And then what happens around six months to maybe two years ish is all of a sudden we split apart and we realize, oh my gosh, you're your own sovereign autonomous human being. And so am I. And this is where those oftentimes we see, you know, the rumbles as Brene talks, Brene Brown talks about, and some conflicts can kind of come up and you can kind of be like, ah, oh, but things are really good. And what's happening, and what's really happening is you're suddenly realizing like, oh my God, you're one human and I'm one human. And now we get to learn how to talk together. And so the beauty that I see in the love languages and the erotic blueprints and the oils is it helps us go from you speak French, I speak Spanish, and we're going to learn English together. It creates this really beautiful pathway in between that allows couples, even singles, to come back together and more like this, instead of being like this, you come together and you're 200%, right? You've got a person here who's hundred percent, another person who's hundred percent. So you're coming together as 200%. Um, and, you know, what I have found when it comes into business is again, the same thing. There's new relationship energy when somebody comes into a business and there's, a, there's power dynamics that aren't necessarily talked about in business. And what the love languages in business do um, is they allow you to create understanding and they allow you to create more balance. Now balance, I don't believe balance exists because in the universe, nothing's ever stabilized. There's always a little bit of movement, whether we realize it or not. And so the beauty of learning how to match and understand somebody else's um, energetic, their love, their desires, their needs is that then you become human. Then you see the humanness in another person in front of you. And out of that grows so much beauty, so much magic, so much abundance. You know, what would your business be like if people around you understood how to appreciate you? Because that's really what, what it is in business. It's called the appreciation languages versus the love language. How do you want to be appreciated? How do you want to be acknowledged? How do you want to be loved? And have you told the people around you? Do you even know? If you don't know how exciting, there's, there's ways that you can find out. And it's super simple. So I just want to share that. And, and we can elaborate and play on that a little bit more. And uh, Scott. Well, thank you. Thank you. 
I, I'm learning a lot and I'm getting really excited about just applying some of these things. And I believe I'm a shapeshifter. I, I'm really <laughs> curious. Okay, I really tell that. Um, I want to just invite anybody that lives in Southern California. And if you don't live in Southern California, you know people who live in Southern California. Everyone knows people in Southern California. Because um, I'm from Southern California, so I think it's the center of the universe. <laughs> but regardless of your feelings about Southern California, please, we're going to have an amazing, amazing afternoon. It's going to be this Sunday, March 17th. It's at my good friend Jack's Pink Palace. It's a beautiful estate, beautiful view, hot tub, pool, the whole nine yards. And we're keeping it fairly small and intimate. I think we're going to keep it to about 25 or 30 people. So we're going to go deep. And um, I didn't mention what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take people through a guided journey in which you're going to learn tools for how to transform your greatest pain, your most painful emotional experiences, your greatest disappointments in life, and how to shift and attract exactly what you really want, exactly what you want to look for. And it's a powerful, powerful practice that we have to do in person directly with you. So that's what we're going to be offering. And um, uh, please join us. Thank you, ladies. And I'll turn it back over to Genevieve or Karina for any of their final thoughts. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, oh wait, hang on, let me move this. I'm doing techie, that's not. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I just, I just wanna make sure to say um, that so much of this isn't about the knowledge and the knowing of how to do it, right? Like we could be on a Facebook live and talk to you for hours about how to have everything that you desire. And, and I've been watching those webinars for how long, right? Um, forever. It wasn't until I started experiencing it in my body, in person, in the flesh, that I, I started to understand what it is that we're talking about, this flow, this divinity, right? This love, this trust um, that then shows up everywhere, right? Which is kind of what we're getting at. Like you can come, it's like a one-stop shop. <laughs> you can come and get everything. Um, I, I don't even want to say up-leveled because it just becomes very easy, right? So I don't want you to think it's work. It's, it's really, the only work is really showing up. And then from there, we invite you to relax because all four of us are doing um, our genius. And um, that's gonna be just so easy and simple and delicious for you. So I can't wait to see you all on Sunday um, and, and, and really see your bodies move into the flow. So, and, oh, and Karina um, reminded me earlier that this is a close on event. <laughs> Okay, unlike some of my other events, so like let's clarify here, it's a close on event, um, touching only self body, right, to your level of comfort. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a safe, super, I really pride myself on creating really safe events, super conscious. Um, I come from like a kink world. So those of you that are in that world know that it is like, we're crazy about consent and boundaries. So like, it will be hyper, hyper consensual and boundaried. Um, any, at least, you know, everything, when, if I'm there, it will be. <laughs> you can count on me to provide the safety. So um, you can fully trust that. Thank you, thank you. And I'll turn it to anyone else who has some final thoughts, but can't wait to see you guys. Well, I'm really looking forward to, to it and to seeing everyone. Thank you for bringing in the safety piece because I really want a lot of people are coming for this leadership event that we're having in San Diego. And, and so I really want them to be able to come and kind of try something new in a really safe environment where um, we can kind of explore these things knowing that it is, you know, just with ourselves and yeah. So thank you for bringing that in. And i um, really looking forward to it. So I guess, if, you know, reach out to who all of us, leave us, you know, if you have more questions, you can message or put them in the comments. And um, looking forward to seeing you guys live in San Diego. All right. I think that's it. Yay. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Goodbye, Facebook friends. Bye. And for anybody who came in late, go back and watch the beginning because there's all sorts of good stuff. So watch the replay all the way through. And let us know, everybody. hashtag replay. We'll answer all your questions. Bye, guys. And the ticket link should be below in the comments. Link is in the comments. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs>